Hey everyone, welcome back to We Live A Lot. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make homemade huckleberry jam. This is the simplest recipe that I've been using. I've used this recipe for years. My mom and grandma both use this and it turns out delicious, wonderful, and easy. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. If you're new to the channel, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to pop down and welcome you to the channel. If you'd like to see how we pick these berries, I will put a link in the description so you can check out our huckleberry picking adventure. As you can see in front of me, I have my berries, I have my jars, I have a couple of the ingredients that are needed to make this simple recipe. I'm going to be showing you step by step what you need to do and how easy it is to make this delicious huckleberry jam. If you're new to canning, um, there are a couple things that you do need to pick up that makes this process a lot easier. Um, a lot of my items were pretty worn out, so I decided to just pick up a couple new utensils. But when I was on Amazon, I did find a canning set, which was perfect. It was super affordable, had everything I needed, um, so I can go ahead and replace my old items. I'm gonna be using these a couple times. Throughout this video, I'll kind of walk you through the items that I'm using um, and exactly what they're for. I did put a link in the description in case you do need to purchase anything for your canning set, just to make it easy for you. All right, so your first step of making huckleberry jam is you're gonna wanna rinse your huckleberries, make sure you get any debris out of there before you dump them into your pan. I've already done that. They're rinsed, they're dried, so they, my berries are ready to go. So today I'm going to be making a double batch of the huckleberry jam. If you're interested in the single batch version, I will put that in the description, just so you have the choice if you wanna make that single batch or that double batch. Uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do is add your huckleberries to your pan. So with this double batch, I will be adding eight cups of huckleberries. And for every cup of huckleberries that you're adding, you're gonna wanna match that with your sugar. So I'll also be adding eight cups of sugar. And also eight tablespoons of water. You're going to want to go ahead and turn your burner to a medium low and just kind of let it simmer around when it starts mixing up at that point you can go ahead and start smashing those berries keep stirring you're going to want to bring it to a boil once it finally reaches that boil, it's okay to go ahead and reduce the heat, let it simmer for a couple minutes, about three to four minutes, keep stirring it. Um, if you do start to see a foam on top, that's completely normal, don't worry at all. You just wanna mainly keep stirring it until you can see that all that sugar has been dissolved. I like to kind of smash the berries as I'm stirring it. All right, as you can see, it's starting to get that little bit of foam on the top. That means it's getting really close to boiling. All right, as you can see, it is getting so close to boiling. Probably just a couple more seconds here, and then we'll go ahead and turn it down so that it can simmer. All right, now that it's starting to boil and that sugar is completely dissolved, I'm gonna go ahead and add my lemon juice, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my pectin. All right, so I need two tablespoons of lemon juice for my recipe. There's two ways you can do it. You can go ahead and purchase the fresh lemons and go ahead and squeeze them yourself. Or um, if you're in a pinch and you would rather just go to the store, you can buy one of those cute little jars of lemon juice. That works also. Um, I've just always done it this way, so I just prefer to go ahead and use those fresh squeezed lemons. Have this really handy little lemon juice squisher that my friend got me and I absolutely love it. It makes this process so much easier. All right, I'm going to be adding six tablespoons of the powdered fruit pectin. This is gonna help thicken up your jam so it has that perfect consistency. We get it all mixed in and then we're gonna go ahead and let it simmer for another one to two minutes here. All right, once your jam has simmered for the last couple minutes, at this point you can go ahead and remove it from the heat. 
Um, you can go ahead and finish prepping your jars and if there's any extra berries that you see that need a little extra mashing, now would be the time to do so because we're getting ready to fill those jars. All right, you wanna make sure that you boil and sanitize your lids. So go ahead and throw them in there. Bring them to a high boil. All right, after your lids have boiled for about four to five minutes, you can go ahead and this little tool makes it really easy. It has a little magnet on the end. So it's really easy to reach in there and grab those lids out, pour the water off, and then set them on your cloth. Right, and steam processes the lids. You just want to get your jars nice and sanitized, clean. When the water's boiling, go ahead and leave them in there for three to five minutes. Alright, so it's time to start putting our jam into our jars. I attached the funnel on my jar here. Fits perfectly. It's going to make it nice and easy to fill this jar. Then I'm going to go ahead and just start scooping it out. You want to leave a little space from the top. You don't want to fill it all the way up. Take your sanitized lid, place it on here nice and firm. There you go. Then as soon as our water starts boiling, we're gonna go ahead and place it into the pot and let it boil in there for about 10 minutes before we remove it. Okay, now that the water is boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and carefully place these jars into the water. They need to sit in here for about 10 minutes. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes. Okay, my jam has been sitting for about 48 hours. I was given a little chance to thicken. It is recommended after you fill your jars, you do give it some setting time, anywhere between 24 to 48. I did notice my jam was turning out a little thin, so I wanted to give it that full 48 hours to kind of settle uh, before I attempted to spread it. After that 48 hours, I popped open the top and it did tend to thicken up a little bit. It was still a little on the thinner side compared to normal batches that I've made, but it tastes just the same. Um, I like to put this on toast, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are amazing, waffles, biscuits, whatever you can think of. My kids will even put it on ice cream sometimes. So whatever you decide to do, I'm sure it's going to taste amazing for you. Um, I went ahead and decided to purchase these little tags from Amazon. I am going to give some of these jars away to family and friends. So I just wanted to add a little personal touch on here. It says handmade with love. Um, I think they'll really appreciate it. 
but as you can see the jam looks pretty good I included the recipe in the description along with any tools and utensils you saw me using while making this batch of jam I would love to hear what tips and tricks you use so feel free to drop a comment below remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing me pick these huckleberries I have included that link in the description as well thank you so much for watching remember why live a little when you can live a lot Thank you.